Gen V from the world of the boys. It's an action drama series about a young girl trying to turn her life around at a college exclusively for superheroes. So I'd made a video about my first impressions of the show after its three episode premiere, but this will be my full season one review. So in the show, we follow Marie. She's a young soup haunted by a past tragedy that had occurred when she first discovered her powers. The best way to describe those powers is that she is basically a bloodbender. She can manipulate blood in a few different creative ways. She sees an opportunity to turn her life around when she gets accepted into Godolkin University, or God U for short. This is an all superhero college where some of the biggest names in Vought have studied, including some members of the Seven. Unfortunately, things start to look ugly at God U pretty quickly. This university does not appear to be any more innocent than Vought, and being packed with a bunch of young, naive, super abled students, I'm sure you can imagine how wild things get. If you give a dumb, unhinged party monger in college superpowers, they're probably gonna use them like an idiot. So as I mentioned in my first impressions video, this show has some great characters, arguably better than the boys. We see a bunch of young soups that, despite having these incredible superpowers, have very real issues, which for some people might be really relatable. Marie is haunted by losing her family at such a young age, but even worse, she's haunted by the fact that she may never see her sister again because of how everything transpired. We also see a lot of supporting characters dealing with struggles of their own, things like dysphoria, eating disorders, mental illness, and neglect. I'm not gonna talk about each of the main characters just to avoid spoilers, but I'll talk about some of the characters that I thought were standouts this season. Marie's roommate, Emma, otherwise known as Little Cricket, is one of my favorite characters of the show. She has the ability to shrink like Ant-Man, or Termite, who you may recall from season three of The Boys. But like a lot of characters in this show, she has some counterplay to her powers, which is arguably to separate these characters from the most powerful soups in the boys' universe, in her case, Termite. In order for her to shrink, she actually has to throw up in order to do so. Each time she does, she gets smaller, and when she wants to get big again, she has to eat to do so. Of course, some characters seem to confuse this with bulimia, which does not help with the fact that she already struggles with the negative perception others might have of her. Next up, we have Kate, who has the incredible power to command other people to do things when she touches them. The counterplay to that is that each time she does this, she gets weaker and weaker and could eventually cause her to faint. She has a very cool arc. At first, she just seemed like a side character that wouldn't have very much agency in the show, but she ends up proving to be incredible. There's a moment in the show where we learn about her past struggles, and I very quickly went from not caring that she existed to thinking, I'm really excited to see what they do with this character. There's a character in this season that I'll leave nameless to avoid spoilers, but he had been name dropped a couple times in The Boys, but never made an appearance. He only has one episode, but I really liked him for the time that we had him. You'll know him when you see him. I think I had read somewhere that we're actually gonna see more of him in season four of The Boys, which I'm really excited for. With the couple of times that they had referenced him in that show, they do imply that he can do some other really cool things that we don't see him do in Gen V. So I'm really excited to see that. Unfortunately, the way that he leaves this show was in my opinion, really dumb. And that leads me to the things that weren't super amazing. My concerns going from the boys to this show were that this show would also one, get political, and two, get overly obscene in a borderline immature way. Both of those things happened. I get that at this point, the obscenities and political commentary are arguably just trademarks for the whole boys universe, but I personally liked the boys a lot more back in season one, where it just didn't feel as reliant on them. There are times where the obscenities turn otherwise great characters into absolute jokes. For an example, the unnamed character that I was just being super cryptic about. The show also occasionally has some cliche network television-esque tropes that really just kind of reflect lazy writing. Like there is a moment in this show where a character actually spilled the beans on his evil plan because he was drunkenly talking to himself out loud when he thought he was alone, but he wasn't. I mean, really, I don't think anybody walked away from that scene without rolling their eyes. That said, the showrunner Eric Kripke was also the showrunner for a network television show for many years, so I guess I can't be too surprised. All things considered, I do think that the pros of this show substantially outweigh the cons. Yes, we do occasionally just have gore for the sake of gore or genitals just for the sake of genitals, but there is enough character depth and good character dynamics that it's all well worth it in the end. My hopes going forward are that these characters become big players in the main storyline for the boys. I would really love to see how Marie interacts with characters like Huey and Starlight. The show is definitely good and a must watch if you're already invested in the boys. I would highly recommend watching this season before season four of the boys comes out. If you're not already watching the boys, then I don't think you need to watch this show. I'm sure it would still entertain a lot of you, but 
with this show taking place after season three of The Boys and referencing some of the events of that show, I think that there would be an extreme lack of context for some of the characters that are mentioned here or make an appearance. Thank you for watching this review. If it brought you any value at all, please consider giving it a like. It really does help the channel grow. I'll see you later this week with my reviews of The Holdovers and The Marvels.